we used to like harass him like literally <laughs> harassment is the word and we used to uh, write salman khan on his attendance sheet uh, i have not seen uh, any of her movies oh. i have yeah i have seen the snippets you know small okay. small things come in but i have not seen she is very angry with me regarding that thodi achhi thodi achhi dikhti to bhi main propose kar leta you never looked like this in college and i'm like okay fine because you are a public figure you have to go through all these things you never you can never ex- escape this and you are answerable to people the highest level of national service what anybody can do is when i was posted in the national investigation agency where you serve the motherland at the highest level and uh, secondly i would uh, say the narcotics control bureau great news about him will travel slower but if there is a bad news about him is the masala hello and welcome to buzz by the bay this episode is a perfect celebration of valentine's month as we have in the studio a power couple who have clearly been pillars of support for each other through many ups and downs controversies and media glare She is a well-known TV theater and film personality, a great dancer and a critically acclaimed actress in the Marathi film industry. He is a top-ranking official with the IRS or Indian Revenue Service. He has held many top important posts but is most known for his role as Mumbai Zonal Director for the Narcotics Control Bureau. Excited to have this dynamic husband and wife duo, Kranti Redkar Vankare and Sameer Vankare on the show. Hello. Hi Anushka. Welcome, Hi. welcome thank to you. the show. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. The first time we are interviewing a husband and wife duo. Wow. And you <laughs> are great. definitely a power couple. Thank you. Uh, but in very diverse fields. Yeah. All right. Performing arts, you know, film industry and revenue collection and investigation and anti-terrorism. I mean, you, it couldn't be more poles apart. Mm-hmm. So I mean how does it work do opposites really attract kranti you want to take that first so not only our professions are different but we as people are poles apart like we are different people and i think that is the beauty of our relationship is that we are so different from one another because if uh, he keeps me grounded he keeps me together uh, because otherwise i'm like all over the place and um, i like he brings the calmness in my life like you know and uh, that's what i li- like about him that he's so organized in life and i'm so disorganized <laughs> so i think all the great positive uh, qualities i mean people will say ah oh, she's just you know talking just because it's her husband no but he genuinely has so many positives that i lack probably uh, to make me complete and that's how it works for us bro yeah samir i mean do you agree with that you think you keep kranti grounded she says uh, uh, more i would like to say uh, of course the opposite poles attract each yes. other and opposite people attract each other whatever wherever i am lacking behind she is perfect in that uh, you know right from uh, taking care of the children yes. number 1 uh, number 2 emotionally also she is very strong uh, number 3 i mean i am not talking about any organizing skills <laughs> but she is a uh, uh, you know her humor is par apar you know par excellence yes so whenever you are down whenever you are upset you know you i look up to her to meeting her uh, and you know to meet her come home uh, so that all the tensions all the stress just mm-hmm. vanishes when when you sit across her and talk to her you know <laughs> simultaneously the kind of uh, as humorous what she is more ferocious she is i would like to tell it doesn't <laughs> look uh, basically Uh, but uh, you know uh, as you st- uh, stated earlier also uh, during the difficult times also uh, due to some code of conduct and due to some you know uh, part of the service i cannot speak uh, sometimes to the media you know but uh, rightly she is called as the better half so whatever i want to communicate in a right way she is really i would like to say uh, kind of a rani lakshmi bai mm-hmm. rani lakshmi bai absolutely Absolutely. Wow, that is an amazing compliment. So you add the de-stressing element and the humor, and Kranti says you keep her grounded, but at the same time she is like this ferocious warrior as well. So definitely um, more ferocious than any of the opponents you've taken yeah, on. Yeah, any time, any time, hands down. <laughs> so where is the meeting point? I mean, usually in a relationship, right? You have to meet halfway, but it happens that one side often has to make a little more adjustment than the other side 
would you say um, you know that your acting career has slowed down a bit after marriage um, actually that would be my personal uh, choice because after my marriage I immediately had my children and I like and I love spending time uh, with my children and it also happens that uh, even if I have to go for a day, by the time <coughs> I'm at the airport, not even while coming back, while going only I start missing them. Mm -hmm. Thankfully with Samir, uh, Samir's family background, mm -hmm. my earning was not, a, I was like, even if I was not a breadwinner in the house, it was okay, you know. So I wanted to take my time and mm -hmm. I didn't want to run after project after project, money after money and I wanted to give that solid time to my children and when my children were small, lockdown happened. So two years anyways, there was no work for anyone. And after that, now they've just become five. So three years post that, I've slowed down on work, but I take a work like a reality show I'm judging, or you know, even if there is an acting job, it has to be like concise and uh, closer to my house or in, within Bombay, I can't travel that much. I suppose he can't really slow down. But now you are with the DGTS in Chennai. So does it mean that you're posted there I, most of the time? Yeah, uh, now I'm in Chennai. I'm uh, an additional commissioner there. Uh, so during my work days, uh, I'm there uh, doing mm -hmm. my duty. And during the weekends or any public holidays, I have to come, I have to meet my children, I have yes. to meet her. So uh, weekends and during the holidays, I'm here, okay. invariably. All right, so you have enough time with Absolutely, the both family as well as work. Okay, yes. but that, that's not an easy um, balancing act. No, no, it's definitely not easy and uh, that is all the more reason uh, other, pe other people like have like one child at a time, I had twins. twins and on top of that with their father not being there, then I have to become father and mother both to two children. So it is a double added job, you know, for me also. Right, okay. absolutely. And you have two little girls, Zia and, and Zaida. Zida. Zia and Zida. Zida. Okay, yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah. What in, are those Arabic names? What uh, inspire so the Zia names? Zia means the first ray of light that sun gives and uh, Zida means strength and power. Lovely, beautiful yeah. name. Yeah, thank you. I like that. And the genesis of the name is basically uh, Zida is derived from my mother's name. Okay. And Zia is derived from my auntie's Masi's name, name who I treated as my mother, both expired, both passed away. Okay. In their remembrance, their names are such. So back to your story, how did you meet? I believe you all were in college together, but yeah. then lost contact and then regained contact. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if you could both tell me a little bit about your love story. Yeah, so uh, we were in the same class together and um, just today morning, I was speaking to a friend of mine who was in my class and she's come back and she still can't believe that I'm married to this boy because uh, we used to like harass him, like literally <laughs> harassment is the word and we used to uh, write Salman Khan on his attendance sheet and <laughs> we used to, one day I remember his car was parked, Actually, he used to come because his mother was so well off that uh, his, his car used to open up like that, you know those winged uh, uh, doors yes, that yes, open yes. up, he used to have that car in college. And we used to think, yaar, kutko kya samajhta hai and all, you know, aise. And then uh, he, his car was parked between two cars. And they were like bumper to bumper. And he wanted to remove it out so quickly. But we were sitting right there at the katta and we were just watching movie, kya karne wala hai. And like that, like that, like that, like that. He was doing it for so long, but he managed. It had come on his ego, you know, to take that car out because otherwise, so, we mean, we just die and die. Yeah, so we never spoke during that time. And then after 10 years, we uh, met at the airport when I was coming from uh, MIFTA Awards. Okay. And he was DC airport at that time, where I thought he was working for Jet Airways. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I, he was nicely suited, booted. And we, like, honestly, I didn't know that there is a DC, AC, anything, nothing hmm. I knew. Yeah. We only know that we will be ground staff or something. And we will be in customs. We didn't know anything about it. And then he met me and uh, he was like, Hi, weren't you that girl who was in my class? And I was like, um, No, I said, Who are you? I'm sorry, I can't recollect you. And then um, he just smiled and he showed off his dimple. And I was like, Oh my God, how are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing, man? And then he's like, I'm good. Uh, so I immediately asked him, you with Jet? And he's like, 
I'm DC Airport. Those are my chambers there. And then I read his name, Samir Vankhede, you know. And then I'm like, oh, yes, of course. It, this bell rings bells in my mm. head. And then, yeah, then we spoke. And then we started becoming friends. And then we were there, like, for, um, I think, four, five years. We were just speaking and talking to each other. And then slowly, then later on in life, he proposed. And then... Okay, lovely. Yeah. And you corroborate that story. That's how it happened. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> But only one addition, the uh, the college story, what she told it was not that simple. Huh. It, it was out, the pestering was out of proportion. Now also I tell him, why didn't you propose to me in uh, college only? Uh -huh. You know, we would have saved so much time and we would be together like for so long. And then he tells me like, to college mein aise dikhti nahi thi na. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he tells me so bluntly. Thodi achi, thodi achi dikhti, to bhi mein propose kar leta. But you never looked like this in college. And I'm like, okay, fine. Oh my God, what yeah. do you have to say I'm, to that? <laughs> okay. In college, I used to have braces. Okay. And then uh, I used to be a part of theatre group. And I never paid attention to myself. I was a big tomboy in life and I was busy doing theatre, plays, this and that. So, itna nahi tha yaar, grooming and all. I was not like, I was groomed according to me. But he was thinking, ha ha ha, koi hoor pari honi che, to that to ho mein thi nahi. I was like, okay, typical middle class girl, yeah. No, I'm sure you look nice even then, oh. you know, we were college, you that know, I mean, nice. those were <laughs> college days, but that's quite a story from yeah. making fun of him in college, yeah. right, to meeting him at the airport when you're coming back from this award, big award yeah. show yeah. Yeah. and you see him in a suit and you actually think he's a jet employee. Yeah. But he was very handsome to be a jet employee. I was also <laughs> thinking that, yeah, acha kasa dikhta hai, kuch kar leta. Acting, acting mein bhi aa sakta tha. And I was thinking that also, you know. <laughs> but then later on, I discovered that he did very well for himself. Okay, yeah. acting. Has that ever crossed your mind? Never. Never? Absolutely <laughs> no. I'm very bad with acting, very bad with uh, no ears for music. He's no filter. Okay. So, just filter so not my kind. It's like that. <laughs> Alright, so Samir, few quest a couple of questions for you. And of course, I want Kranti's inputs also on these, right? So you've served in many departments, from the Home Affairs Ministry, Customs, as we know, Intelligence Bureau, um, Zonal Director, NCB, which of course was, has been in the news because of, you know, various reasons. And you've worked against various Islamic State modules in India. You've busted many smugglers, um, medals for excellence. Which of your role has been the most, have you been the most passionate about? Uh, see, uh, uh, to be very frank enough, each and every department has a very different ethos, basically. And uh, very challenging. These all departments are very challenging. Uh, but uh, the most, uh, uh, you know, the kind of the highest level of national service, what anybody can do, is when I was posted in the National Investigation Agency, where you serve the motherland at the highest level. And uh, secondly, I would uh, say the Narcotics Control Bureau, where... Uh, the smallest issue of a house regarding, you know, drug consumption, the smallest issue is dealt with you to, you know, stop the miseries of the parents, basically. Yeah. Right. So that was, you know, the lowest level what you can do to serve the uh, society and the nation. So these two places I really liked uh, working in. Absolutely. So I recently saw on Instagram, I think just uh, very recently, you put a post on a TEDx talk that you did right. about, you know, Nasha Mukta. Bharat, yeah. Nasha Mukt Bharat bahut hi mahatvapurna hai vikas right, ke liye, right. you know, you have said all that. Right. So, um, you're not obviously with the Narcotics Control Bureau anymore, but this is something you are still very passionate about. So, how do you work towards that? And um, also, I wanted to ask you, there's so many countries now that are sort of legalizing certain drugs. Right. I see, both of your uh, uh, questions I would answer uh, separately. Number one is, uh, as you know, I belong to the Indian Revenue Service. And apart from that, being a citizen also, uh, the most important problem in today's time we have is in narcotics. You know, the people are grappling with the issue, parents are grappling with the issue. And 30% of the youth population we have in our nation, basically. So I don't, as, as Samir Vankhir, as a very common normal citizen, I don't want my country to be a very weak country in any sense. I want a very strong nation with full youth, with full vigor, and a strong nation with full fitness. So that I would like a Nasha Mukta Bharat. What our Honourable Prime Minister, what our Honourable Home Minister are always emphasising on 
So I'm following the same path what both of them have mm -hmm. enunciated. And I'm going to all the districts, rural parts also, uh, to spread the message of awareness okay. against the drugs. So if we fight it, I'm sure nobody can stand the you know might of the people. These drug suppliers, peddlers, everybody will have to wind up and leave the country. So you're going to rural that. areas as well? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, I do that. So this is a campaign you're doing independently? Absolutely, independently, uh, as a uh, IRS officer and as a normal citizen who is concerned about the nation. Can you give us some idea of statistics, how deeply have drugs penetrated and you know? Uh, see, if uh, uh, you're talking about the statistic part, uh, I remember uh, because I was, in I was the zonal director in 2020 and 21. So there uh, in Mumbai, I, I remember we had, uh, you know, uh, taken action legal on more than 357 people in one single year. And there were around 117 cases in Mumbai itself. So that kind of rampant it was. And the people, unfortunately, who were uh, on whom the action was taken or who were caught on the uh, other side of the law were all youngsters uh, ranging between 18 years to 34 years of age. I mean, that is my major priority, to create awareness and to guide the people, the parents, the students, the schools. When anybody you come across such kind of thing, what is to be done? There is a rehabilitation uh, procedures, uh, you know, centers, go there. And if at all you find any kind of nefarious activity happens, so where to approach and how to approach without getting scared. So that is my only thing, you know, to create awareness. And I'm sure about it. Uh, I'm doing my humble bit. Other people might do about it, but I'll try my best to, uh, you know, uh, fight against these people. I totally agree with you on a drug-free India. I totally agree. But like you said, you look at these people as physically ill. Right. right, and they need so. Don't you think reform and rehabilitation is a better way to go about it as opposed to uh, see, punishment? <clears throat> see, there are a lot many things. If you see the NDPS Act, uh, uh, I'll be little, you know, uh, very technical about yeah. uh, the NDPS Act. There are various kind of punishments. There are various kind of groups. Basically, there is a commercial quantity, there is an intermediate quantity, there is a small quantity. That is a consumption quantity. So, if anybody is caught with small quantity, consumption quantity, the punishment there, the punishment it is a punishable offence. So it is one year plus 10,000 fine, it can be both. Middle quantity, if it, they are caught, it is the uh, uh, imprisonment can be anywhere between 10 years and fine of 10,000 rupees. If you are caught with commercial quantity, the imprisonment can be 20 years plus 2 lakh rupees. So it is differentiated as per the quantity. So when anybody is caught with a small quantity for consumption, see now the law enunciate it is a, uh, you know illegal activity, so you have to face the law. but there is a, a provision in the NDPS Act itself. After the legal formalities, you can opt for rehabilitation also, for reformation. So that also we try to do that. Whenever any person acquires bail, we rather than you know being heavy on him, we try to send him to a rehab so that he can come to the mainstream of life, reform himself, rehab. So we are looking to them as uh, you know uh, ill patients, as addicts, not as criminals. But if you don't. Uh, you know, for me, for as a law enforcement officer, if you don't take action on the commercial, on the suppliers, on the peddlers, on the smugglers, you have to take because it is a very, very serious crime. It is virtually eating up the nation. Yeah. And you might be knowing about the concept called as narco-terrorism. So you need to uh, take action on them legally in order to, you know, stabilize this kind of issues. No, absolutely. It is, it is a serious crime. I totally agree with you. Um, on that front. So, but what about like countries like Thailand, which used yeah. to give death penalty for drugs and now like legalizing drugs like marijuana? And right. So. See, uh, two, three things. Uh, and this I'm answering you as Samir Vankhede and not as a, a, you know, serving officer. My personal view in this uh, is uh, we are a very one, uh, 140 crore population we have out here. We are talking about few countries, you name one country, you, there are some few European countries. What, is the, what are the population of those countries? Mm -hmm. What is the police law enforcement ratio to those kind of people? That we need to think. Uh, secondly, we need to see about the education level also of those people. We cannot compare ourselves with the European or the you know North American kind of countries where there is a regulated thing which is going on. Certain ounces, certain amount of drug is going in some area. Can we really afford doing this? In, in 140 crore of people out here, 30% youth population. We are, if, if we do all these kind of things, we will be prone to getting abused. So in no form, uh, you know, I think so, these things should be legalized because it is only harming the youth. Absolutely.
No, absolutely. Like you mentioned, with such a population, it would go spiral totally out of control. Kranti, do you also help in this campaign, this anti-drug? Yeah, campaign? yeah, yeah. Most of the places, wherever. See, we do it absolutely uh, out of love for our country and uh, there are no commercials involved. There is nothing. It is absolutely selfless uh, thing that we are doing here. And um, since the time he served in NCB and since the time that we have seen people so closely get destroyed because of drugs my eyes are filled with tears when i say this um, because people are not even realizing what is what it is doing to the next generation and uh, i know girls from very well to do family going into prostitution only just because they want their drugs from the peddlers they're ready to sleep with the peddlers do you know how difficult that is for a father who's probably a doctor you know, who's dreamt that my, do my daughter will be a doctor one day and she's doing this. What are we doing to our youth, you know? Legalizing it? H how? How can we legalize something like this? Today, I have seen Samir work so hard and there are parents, even today, coming to our house, literally coming and touching his feet and saying that he can show you off, off the camera, he'll show you the photos also. Ye aaj military mein bharti ho raha hai. Such big long locks, all jata jata he's made, mm. full tattoo, this, that, this and that. And everything is cleaned, his hair is gone. He's, he's a reformed person, his body's clean, he's become healthy, he's got into fitness, he goes to the gym, today he's serving in the army. So if this is our dream, I mean, are we wrong to dream like this? No, I think we have to make a better country if we work hard ourselves first, right? So that is our dream. It's no, that's good that you're yeah. both very passionate about yeah, this. Yeah, so Kranti, yeah. can you narrate? I mean, obviously Samir's job must be pretty stressful for you, right? You have yeah. two young children. Yeah. If you could narrate an instance where you felt really afraid. See, Samir has a habit of leading from the front. Even if there is a team of 20, he's the first one to attack the house or the factory or wherever he's going and all of, all, all of those people are armed. It's not like they are uh, just sitting there in an office behind a laptop, no. They have guns, they have their weapons, this and that. And uh, it was a very, very shady building, um, I think it's somewhere in Dongri. And that operation happened and I, I remember he came home slightly hurt and uh, two, three other uh, officers were with him and they came home just to change for a brief, brief moment and one of the officer was actually telling him ki, uh, telling me that madam tumi sarana sangana samorun ekdam asa he naka karu lead naka karu ami aot na we are there you know yeah. we we'll lead we are there sarana sanga unko kuch ho gaya to fir pura operation hi dhara ka dhara reh jayega to sir ko bolo na aap piche rahe aise jaate to humko dar lagta hai you know so, I said that if he is not in front of me, then actually I said that I will talk to him. Although he will not hear me, he is different. But the other one said that if you are in front of me, then you are dumb. It's like because he is leading, we, have, we get the power from him. So, uh, I have been a part of these discussions, you know, along with uh, along with the officers that have served this nation along with him and was so proud of the fact that they got to work with an officer or a boss like him that you know one of the officers was telling me that I have worked I've served for 30 25 years now but ye last ke do saal mere sabse yaad rahenge. these are the two years that I actually worked rather than other 23 years so I think he's made his mark and he's made them feel what they must feel for their nation. No, absolutely. And yeah. you are definitely yeah. proud of him. Yeah, and yeah. that's great. But how do you protect your children from, let's say, media scrutiny or yeah. glare or yeah. difficult situations? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, they, they, I think so, because they hear. And children nowadays are very, very intelligent. Uh, they, uh, they also know that uh, Samir is fighting all the cases against the system where he's being targeted. And all of these cases are happening, and I still remember I had I have uh, taught them to read uh, the you know those lucky numbers come on the watch like one 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 one. So I have taught them also see this these numbers come now maybe these are lucky numbers you have to make a wish. 
So uh, one day those numbers came and my daughter tells me, she's just five and she tells me, Mama, Mama, lucky numbers. I said, yeah, chalo, make a wish. Let my papa win all the battles. So they know that their father is going through a battle. They know that he's fighting some bad people. They are our children. So they are ready to face the world, I'm sure. That's yeah. great. You are bringing them up in a very yeah. brave and yeah, courageous way. Yeah. So Samir, which of Kranti's talents are, you know, are you most impressed by? She has many talents, right? She's a dancer, an actor. Which of um, her talents make you that most proud? <laughs> See, Best I'll, talent. I'll, I'll tell you the fact. Uh, I have not seen uh, any of her movies. Oh, no. I have. Yeah, I have seen the snippets. You know, small, okay. small things yeah. come in, but I have not seen. She is very angry with me regarding that. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't see movies also. So that is number one. Uh, number two, I know, yeah, she's very famous for some of the songs, what she has yes. done. She's very famous for that. Uh, but uh, uh, as a quality, you know, uh, the humorous side is, uh, you know, uh, very much... Rarely I find such humorous person, you know, uh, you have come across. Yes. So that is, yeah, so that uh, her sense of humor is too good. The timing is too good. So it's her comic timing, her humor, of course. Absolutely. You specialize in a comedy film, <laughs> yeah, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So that is such a great talent to have, a sense of humor, right? I mean, yeah. that is one of the most attractive talents that a person can have. But I'm sure you, no. you say you haven't seen any of her movies, no, which no, no, I no, don't no. think that's really... <laughs> No, no, he has Acceptable. I, I actually, uh, sometimes, initially I used to force him to come for my premieres and all. But he's a very shy guy any which way, okay. so he never used to uh, come. But uh, slowly, probably, when he's free, probably I'll show him yeah. some of see, my... See, generally, the uh, movies, uh, Hindi movies, rarely I see. Uh, uh, unless and until it is a historic movie, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Historical, some sense. So, I see those kind of movies. Or then, I only see action movies. Okay. <laughs> so for that reason, the kind of movies, what she does, her uh -huh. genre is completely different. Mm -hmm. She does those kind of romantic uh, movies and you know, which is not my <laughs> palette. Comedy. Okay, well, I think that has to change now. Yeah. <laughs> but you must yeah. have seen the song, the Kongi <coughs> That, that I've seen. That yeah. you must, I mean, you no, can't that. No, that I've seen that. and I know that is because of that she's very popular. People <laughs> still like that song mm -hmm. and all that. I, I love know. that song and I love your yeah. performance. That's, that's amazing. So can we go on to one of, you know, the infamous case, right, of Aryan Khan. Uh, do you have any regrets about that? Uh, see, first thing, uh, the word infamous, uh, I don't know, but uh, I would like to say definitely it's one of my smallest case. Okay. And uh, secondly, uh, due to some matters which are subjudiced in the Honourable Court, mm -hmm. uh, I cannot discuss the matter basically. Okay. And uh, thirdly, regarding any regrets in life, I would like to answer. I have absolutely zero percent regrets. If gotten an opportunity, I'll do things again. Okay, fine. And uh, just general, whatever, this, there is no regrets. I have only served and served my people and my nation. That's it. Right. I know it's sub judice because there have been allegations against yeah. you and other NCB members and CBI inquiries. Yeah. Obviously, you cannot comment absolutely. on that. Yes, you cannot that comment true. on that. But I asked you about regrets and you said, you know, essentially you don't um, have it any regrets, though he has not even been mentioned in... I mean, in right. the charge sheet, but we won't get into that. I want to ask you about the aftermath of that. How did it affect your family? Uh, see, family, the uh, uh, I have been blessed to have uh, in my house Durgas and Lakshmi's. As I said to you earlier, my sister also, elder sister. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, being uh, my mother being, uh, you know, and uh, torch bearer for us, she is no more now. So, my sister and my wife. Uh, I used to tell people, uh, you know, in a very cryptic kind of tone, Tum to mere se baad mein lad loge, pehle mere ghar mein aurdo se lad lo, baad mein mein aunga. So they were handling things very aptly. See, there are some code of conduct which I cannot answer. When the allegations are put on you, you cannot answer. You know, yeah. you cannot come out, no, no, they, these things are there. Mm -hmm. So there are people who can speak for you and they fought very nicely and I'm very, very proud about it. The kind of thing I have never seen in my 44 years of life, what mm -hmm. my wife and what my sister, you know, they fought bravely. Uh, secondly, that my internal thing, uh, at times you ponder, uh, you have done, you have served your motherland, you have done your service. Uh, but uh, in the, uh, you know, cause of the nation, how much will your family suffer? Mm -hmm. Your wife, your children. Uh, but, uh, you know, finally I look at them. They are more stronger and more resolute, you know, as what I am. So it's okay, fine. They are also serving the nation. 
Yeah. And the seeing them, seeing us, our children will also be strong. And we are proud of it. So, uh, you know, uh, after math also, for me, the critics of the media was just an entertainment for me. Okay. Uh, I never took it seriously because mm. I know what the reality is. All right. So, it was just an entertainment. Uh, regarding my family, they became more strong and resolute and I am proud of them. All right. My parents are 80 years old. Okay. They also faced all of this at this age. Where they knew that their son-in-law is right and uh, how honest he is. If one officer you pick who's known for his honesty was Samir and if he is blamed for this 25 CR or whatever they are saying, it's hilarious. It is laughable and hence um, my parents also knew everything. At the age of 80 also they went through all the search, this, that. But my uh, my sisters and my parents, they are my source of strength. Uh, they, I, once I asked my father, I said, Papa, uh, you tension to tension. So then my father says, Ki, tension is not tension is not So he's like, don't take stress, give stress instead. <laughs> Tell somebody to fight. And that was, that's it. You know, coming from an old 80 year old guy that is giving strength to him to fight is more than enough. You know, half battle won there because when you get weak is when your family is weak. But we are blessed with, uh, I am blessed with great in-laws, my family members. The, the, we have a very short and small family but they are all there for each other. So you get your strength and resolve clearly from your parents, yeah. I mean, judging by what you've just said. So as you said, Samir, that the media, you know, that publicity blitz, that whole media blitz around that time and that had taken over the media completely. You said that was like entertainment for you. But at some level, it's also tough, right? I mean, for, for you to be in that media scrutiny so much. Uh, I feel, see, because you are a public figure, you have to go through all these things. You, ne you can never ex escape this. And you are answerable to people. People are going to ask you questions. If he books a case, there are media channels who are writing about a medal that he's got. So in case if there is uh, something um, that they're getting like a masala or gossip, you know, they, if they, because he's such a, see, you know, great news about him will travel slower. But if there is a bad news about him, is the masala. Still, after reading that, che, kai lele, kuch bhi likhte hai, bakwas. So, when we enter a mall or a street or this or that, I don't know, we were thinking that this will work adversely. But to our surprise, the first day after uh, a so-called political leader started making the press conferences, mm -hmm. in that same week, at the weekend, I said, why should we sit in the house? Let's go take our kids to the mall. And in, amidst all of that press conferences, when I, I took my children and him to the mall, we had people crying for us, hugging us. Sir, we want a picture with you. We have never seen a fighter like you. Sir, ye sab ho raha hai. Humko pata hai ye sab kyu ho raha hai aapke saath mein. Humko pata hai sachcha hai kya hai, sir. Aap honest isliye aapko daba raha hai, sir. Sab humko maalum hai. To ye sab agar logo ko aur achhi tarikhe se uh, media ne dikha diya hai, you know, unke against lick kar, uh, to hume media ke bhi abhar hi maanne chahiye. Yeah, what next for you now? I believe you're directing... Uh... Yeah so, yeah, yeah, so there is a film called Rainbow that I just completed. Uh, it has Sharad Kelkar and uh, Urmila Kanetkar and Sonali Kulkarni and Rishi Saxena. That should come out this year. And there is another film that is uh, going on floor in May. Okay, which which one is that? Uh, that is yet not uh, discussed. Uh, okay, so okay. I, I can't reveal the name, but I will be announcing it very soon. So you, of course, are a very sought-after actress in the Marathi film industry. What about forays into Bollywood? Uh, probably, uh, but I think so. I don't know how much mainstream I can go, uh, okay. but definitely some independent projects I would love to do. Independent yeah, projects yeah, yeah, in yeah. Bollywood. Yeah, yeah. So, Samir, you, but you have no issue with Kranti being on sets and acting and this and that. No, never. In fact, I tell her, uh, you know, after the. Uh, children becoming little old now so in fact I tell her because she's a very creative person and I know that very well you know off late when she was nursing the children so during that time she was missing her professional side also so off late I also encourage her go, go explore your creativity kind of thing yeah. you know and I'm very happy she's on the right way yeah 
so i just want her to flourish in her you know not for anything monetary of course uh, but for her creativity and for her uh, and for my sanity sanity and satisfaction absolutely yeah, yeah. 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 my sanity because yeah. you if you are a creative person and if you are not working um it can take a, a toll on your mental health because all the juices where will they go you know yeah. mental juices so you, they have to have a vent out yeah absolutely last couple of questions and we're going to play a quick how well do you know oh, your spouse enough, kind right. of game yeah. so one is um, samir what keeps you motivated to serve the country in spite of you know you have taken a hit in some ways right you have paid a price and um, there have been downfalls of course great um, achievements also so what keeps you motivated to go on serving the country uh, see basically right from uh, childhood uh, i have been just uh, given two options by my mother either you will be wearing a khaki or you will be wearing an olive green yeah so right from childhood i was trained to be like this only what i am I, and my ideas were very clear right from the childhood and uh, you know my mother before passing away also that was the only thing in her mind you know she used to write uh, couplets and poetries also so one such uh, poetry also i remember where still that diary is with me and she had written that in two, 2006 ki i have dedicated my son to towards the nation oh. yeah so i you know such kind of entertainments happen in your life <laughs> whenever such things happen and that doesn't deter me from serving my motherland i'm serving my real mother also and my motherland same and i will do that till the last breath of my life irrespective of how many pulls pressures allegations controversies i don't care about anything okay lovely and lastly can you all both give me mantras for success for a successful relationship for the audience for our youth for young couples old couples also um for a very successful relation when you feel like fighting with each other or if you disagree with each other just keep quiet for some time and give each other space think about the entire situation do not blurt out anything while you're angry think about the situation then open your message iphone your message or your whatsapp whatever you feel write it down send him across he will then send what he feels come to a conclusion this is what i feel in the end and this is what i feel in the end and that's it you will not fight so i feel uh, communication is the key to a successful marriage okay very yeah. nice Any yeah and uh, you know i know her since 1997 so around uh, you know tw- more than 25 years and we have been married uh, for uh, around more than 7 to 8 years now uh i don't remember even you know it might be sounding a cliche or something very abnormal but i don't remember ke when we have fought with each, uh, with each other you know yeah. i don't remember that uh, so touch wood i mean god has been very kind enough uh, to have a very normal and good relationship with each other but of course yes we should control uh, each other's temper number one uh, number two we should respect uh, each other a lot and uh, you know the kind of uh, one thing advice i'd like to give the youngsters especially men uh, re- remove remove that kind of uh, you know male ego in your mind when yeah. you're treating with a woman she is more greater than you your mother has been a woman and uh, you know she is more uh, uh, you know uh, emotionally balanced than you she is more stronger than you yeah. so respect her basically yeah and also because samir has such a strong influence of a mother of his mother on his life he'll never try he never tries to curb me because that's what he wants me to be and every woman wants to be that and that's where i get my power from you know so thanks to my mother in law that she inculcated all these amazing qualities in samir that he sees no fear of a powerful woman wow yeah okay like almost sounds like the urban legend right yeah, it's like a legend seriously <laughs> urban thing. legend men like that are not supposed to exist yeah right? how come how come everything is there in one guy yeah, how is it possible okay great i can see you compliment each other a lot and your mom has clearly taught you how to respect Absolutely. women was yeah. your mom from where was she from ha um, it's a very interesting story in short uh, my uh, mother she is from haryana okay a small place called a rewadi the land of boxers so she the, my nana ji he migrated from haryana t- in mumbai and my father he was from a very small town of washim you know it's near akola okay. very small uh, place you know 
So both had a love marriage way back in 1978 basically. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Lovely. Okay, we're going to play a game of how well do you know your spouse and we got a set of questions for Sameer which we'll answer first then for Kranti. I'm going to call out the questions, okay? Um, what's Sameer's favorite color? They're both going to answer on their sheet of paper and later I'm going to compare their answers. What did he want to be as a kid? His favorite holiday destination, you can choose two or three top destinations if you want. What three items would he take if he was stranded on an island? Okay, would he like vada pav or samosa? Cat person or dog person? His favorite book or couple of books? And lastly, his role model. So both Samir and Kranti are going to answer the same set of questions. Samir will write about himself, Kranti will write about Samir. And we're going to see how the answers check off. Wow, I'm, I'm going to read out Samir's answers first, then Kranti's answers, okay? What is Samir's favorite color? Samir has written black, Kranti has written white or black. Okay, great. White was also there, but probably he's not allowed to wear white. So. Okay, lovely. What did he want to be as a kid? Samir has written police and army, and Kranti has written cop. So that also yeah. matches. <laughs> Superb. Okay. His favorite holiday destination or two or three top destinations Goa and the UK, and Kranti has written London. Okay, again, that checks off. Okay. All right, what three items would he take if he was stranded on an Disney. island? Samir has written cell, wallet, gun. And um, Kranti has written phone and wallet. Okay, so one. <laughs> one. Wow. Superb! Amazing, yeah. You, you, you really are doing well on this game. Vadapa or samosa? None actually, Samir has written. And you've also written none, Kranti. <laughs> Superb! Okay. <laughs> All right, cat person or dog person? Samir has written dog person and um, Kranti has written dog if he had to choose, otherwise none. Okay, so you, you've taken it a step further. Lovely. Um, his favorite book or couple of books, Sunset at... Sri Ranga Patnam. Sri Ranga Patnam and... Uh, Janta Raja. Janta Raja. Okay, sorry, your handwriting was a bit... Uh, okay, so Kranti said there were too many books and didn't answer that one. Role model, Chhatrapati Shivaji. And B. R. Ambedkar, Chhatrapati Sh Shivaji, and uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar, and Bhagat Singh. Superb! Yes. <laughs> oh my God! So, she knows one. Me. Yeah, absolutely. So, you've literally got like seven out of eight, and yeah. one because there were too many books. Too many so, books. give you a yeah, grade. Superb! A. A plus on that one. Yeah. Now, we're going to play the same game. Bunch of questions for Kranti. But I All don't right. know. I mean, I'm as good as her. <laughs> I don't know. That. So then she'll be the winner of this I game really and then you owe, owe her a prize at the end of it. You know that? I love if she wins over me. Okay. All right. I'm going to read out the questions. Uh, oh. Kran okay. Kranti's favorite film that she's acted in or top two. <clears throat> Currently, which song or songs are her favorite? Her favorite color or top two colors? Would Kranti prefer beach or mountains? Tea or coffee? One thing that annoys her the most? Does she prefer directing or acting? And who is Kranti's role model? So these are the eight questions for Kranti. Let's see how Samir fares in this game. Come on, you've been part of the intelligence bureau and everything. I know, I know. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's more tougher than UPSC. <laughs> <laughs> tougher than UPSC. I mean, I tried my best. I don't know. God okay, save me. Okay, <laughs> okay, fine. All right. I'm going to read Kranti's answers first about herself and then Samir's. All right. Kranti's favorite film she's acted in, Jatra. And Samir's also written Jatra. And Mother? Mother, Mother Teresa. Okay, good. So you got that correct. Currently, which song or songs are her favorite? Kranti said Sathya Singham. And. Um, I. Uh, that is no, Kakan. Kakan, okay, yeah, yeah. Kakan song. My song. Okay, Kakan, Komli Parali, Komli Parali and Parali then. One, one more song from Agnipat is her favorite yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, so we'll give him. Should we give yeah, him that? Yeah, right? we should no. give him that. Should okay. Give him that. Abhi no. Yeah, I love that. All right, her favorite color, white, she's written, and uh, Samir is also written black, white. Okay, beach or mountains, beach, and Samir has also answered beach. Tea or coffee, Granti said coffee, Samir has also answered coffee. Uh, thing that annoys her the most, 
not being respected kranti has said and um, samira said cheating lying which okay fair enough yeah. uh, does she prefer directing or acting directing and samira has written both yeah. her role mo- model mom and samira has also written her mother and father superb yeah. i think both of you fared really yeah. well in that game <laughs> thank god i'm you were but scared. actually songs, you know i had to think about which songs i like and yeah. i must say that ra- the song that i have written is my favorite but those three songs uh-huh. are equal or rather more favorite than the one that i have written really so yeah you actually so so he knows you better than you know yourself yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> yeah. that it is okay wonderful okay thank you so much thank for you. joining thank us you. on buzz by the bay i thoroughly enjoyed yes. this session yeah. you know i was the first one i've done with a power couple and i i really enjoyed it you all complement each other beautifully you all are both very strong have a lot of resolve and really work hard for the nation which is Thank the you. most important thing. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Pleasure Thank being you. here.